Hey friends, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're gonna to continue with partitioning shapes. But now we're gonna be working with halves, thirds, and fourths. So our learning goal for today says, I can partition circles and rectangles into equal parts and describe the parts as halves, thirds, or fourths. Okay, so again, remember partition means we're just going to divide something into smaller parts. Okay, so the materials that you'll need for this lesson are your dry erase board, one piece of paper that's eight and a half by 11, so just a regular sheet of paper, scissors, colored pencils or crayons, and you'll need your lesson templates. Now, you'll need your lesson nine template from yesterday. You don't need to cut it out again or print it, you just need that circle, so make sure that you save or have the circle from yesterday. Okay, and then you'll need this lesson 10 template as well. Okay, so make sure you grab those before we get started. Also, friends, sorry, just a little note. If you don't have your circle from yesterday, that's okay. We can talk about it together, okay? All right, so here we go. In our previous lesson, we worked with halves, right? Today, let's look at thirds. All right, so when something is divided into thirds, how many equal shares does it have? So like when we're dividing something into halves, it had two equal shares. So how many equal shares does a, a shape have if we divide it into th thirds? It has three, exactly, you guys got it. All right, so let's grab our lesson template and I want you to draw two lines in the top two rectangles that show two different ways to partition them into thirds, okay? so. Pause the video, just those top two rectangles, draw lines, two lines to partition them into thirds, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so I'm gonna kind of zoom in and have them a little bit bigger for us. So here's my two rectangles. I'm gonna draw two lines to split this first rectangle into thirds and I drew two vertical lines to make that happen. Now I'm gonna draw two horizontal lines to split it up. So these are two different ways that you could split up your rectangles into thirds. So now I want you to shade one third of each rectangle. So pause the video, shade one third of each rectangle, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends. Here we go. All right, so here's one third and one third. What do you notice about how the rectangles look now? So pause the video, think about how they look now, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, let's talk about it. So what do we notice about how they look now? Well, the thirds look different, right? One is long and skinny, and the other is short and wide. Yeah, so they look two different, two different ways there. But even though they're different shapes, they're both one third of the whole shape. They have two parts unshaded. So that means not shaded, because remember un, the prefix un means not. So not shaded, two parts are not shaded. So one part for each shape is shaded, and two parts are unshaded. All right, so let's go back to our lesson template. Let's practice partitioning the rest of the rectangles into thirds. So I want you to focus on just the two in the middle, okay, the two middle rectangles. Now, remember, you need to try and make your rectangles um, or your thirds as equal as possible. So let's check this example out. So, oh man, no bueno. That one is no bueno because look how big that space is in the middle and those two on the end are super tiny. So remember, you're trying to make them as equal as possible. So let's try this one. Oh, sorry, I said the two in the middle. We're doing the two last ones on the left. My bad. All right, so what do we think here? Yeah, approved, good, perfect. Okay, I did the best job I could. It's not, nothing is gonna be exact, but you want it to look closer to the one on the bottom than the one on the top that I drew. Okay, so just make sure that you're trying to make them as equal as possible. So you're gonna be working with these two rectangles. I want you to do both of them to be as equal as possible. Okay, so pause the video. Partition your rectangles into thirds, those two on the left, as equally as you possibly can, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends. So now you're gonna choose your rectangle that 
best shows third. So you just do two, right? Pick the one that looks the best. And let's color each third and count as we go. So here's mine. Here's my thirds. So let's color one part. Okay, I want you to color one part and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, so how many thirds are shaded? Yeah, one third. Okay, so let's color one more part. So here's we have one more part. So I want you to pause the video, color one more part, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, here we go. All right, so how many thirds are shaded now? Yeah, two thirds, because two of the parts are shaded. And then we call it thirds because the whole rectangle is split into three parts. All right, so let's color the last part. So pause the video, color the last part, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, how many thirds are shaded now? Three thirds, yeah, or one whole. All right, so let's go back to our lesson template. Now we're gonna focus on these two parts, and you're gonna use two vertical lines to partition the top rectangle into thirds. Okay, so here we go just like this. So pause the video, do the top rectangle into thirds, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. All right, so now you're gonna draw one vertical line to cut the rectangle underneath into halves. So that bottom rectangle, not doing thirds this time, you're doing halves. So here's your halves, pause the video, and then draw your halves and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so yours should look like that, okay? I'm gonna zoom in here so it's a little bit easier for us to see. I want you to color one third of the top rectangle and one half of the bottom rectangle, okay? So one third of the top, one half of the bottom, Color it in and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, so here is what we should have. So make sure you pause if you need more time. Okay, so here's one third, here's one half shaded. All right, so let's look at both rectangles as a whole, right? Which has more parts, halves or thirds? Which one has more parts? Yeah, thirds does, right? Because there's three parts and that's more than two in our halves. So thirds have more parts, but the parts are smaller. Why? Why do you guys think that? Yeah, because the more times you cut the rectangle, the smaller the pieces will be. So even though the number gets bigger when you're partitioning, your parts actually get smaller. That's kind of crazy, right? But it's so true. Think about if you were sharing a pizza with a friend. If you and one friend shared it, you would get so much more pizza than if you and five friends shared it because they would have to be smaller pieces with more people. All right, so let's try that with circles. Okay, so here's two circles, right? I have them split up into halves and then I have one split up into thirds. So you're gonna partition the circles on your lesson template into halves and thirds and shade one part. Now, friends, I will say when you're doing the circle with thirds, it can be a little bit tricky. So kind of think about it like a Y shape. Like if you look at my circle on the right, it's like a Y, but the top part of the Y, they're kind of flattened out a little bit more. Okay, so think about a Y shape and just flatten it out a little bit. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay, just do the best that you can. So pause the video, partition your circles into halves and thirds, shade one part, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Okay, so here's one part shaded, and here's one part shaded. Which one is more, one half or one third? Yeah, one half is more, right? But why?
Yeah, it's the same as the rectangle. The parts are larger when you split it into less pieces. All right, so grab your circle from the previous lesson. Okay, this guy right here. So grab that real quick. Pause if you need time to find it. Okay, here we go. So we've already folded, colored, and labeled one half. Let's turn the circle over and make fourths or quarters on the other side. So fourths and quarters mean the same thing. And kind of, you know how I remember this, it helps me to think about it. fourths are quarters because you need four quarters to make one dollar. So I think about quarters like the coin go along with fourths and you need four quarters. I don't know, that's just kind of how my mind works. Sometimes I need little tricks to help me remember, okay? But now, if you don't have your circle from yesterday, that's okay. What I would like for you to do is just draw a circle on your dry erase board, okay? And we can turn it into fourths. Okay, so when something is divided into fourths, how many equal shares does it have? Yeah, it has four, right? Oh, look, I'm just hanging out in the circle there. <laughs> All right, so now I want you to fold your circle to partition it into four equal parts. Make sure that each part is equal in size. So the way that you could fold your circle into four equal parts, you could fold it in half, right? And then you could fold it in half um, the opposite way. So you can maybe fold left to right, and then open it, and then you could fold top to bottom, and you'll get your four equal parts. So it should look just like this. Then you're gonna color and label one fourth of your circle. Okay, so pause the video, fold your circle so you get four equal parts, and then color and label one fourth of your circle, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Okay, so here's one fourth colored, and now it's labeled. So let's count the fourths as I point to each part. Ready? So we're gonna start with one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths, which is also one whole. Okay, so grab your lesson template again. And you're going to partition the circles on your template into fourths. So pause the video, partition those two circles into fourths, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. All right, so you're going to choose the best circle and shade one fourth. Okay, so pause the video, shade one fourth, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, here we go. All right, so here's one fourth shaded. Now shade two fourths. So pause the video. Now shade two fourths and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, here's my two fourths. Now, if you shaded a different part, that's totally fine. As long as you have two of the parts shaded, that's two fourths. All right, now shade three fourths. So pause the video, shade on, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. Okay, friends, what do you think I'm going to tell you to do next? Yeah, four fourths. Okay, so pause the video, shade four fourths, and then click play when you're ready for the next step. All right, friends, there's my four fourths shaded, which is also one whole. All right, so let's see how we can partition a rectangle into fourths or quarters. So, really, there's two main ways that we're gonna do that, where we can draw our horizontal lines, okay? Or we could draw our vertical lines. Now, most of you probably would think about drawing this way if you're gonna split a rectangle into fourths. So I'm gonna use this as my example. Okay, so here, what part is shaded now? Yeah, one fourth, right? Because one part is shaded and there's four total parts. So that's where we get one fourth. All right, so now I shaded another one. What part is shaded now? Yeah, two-fourths. You got it. 
Okay. Oh, there's another one. What part is shaded now? Three fourths. Awesome. Okay. Here's another part shaded. Now what part is shaded? Yeah, four fourths. You got it. Okay. So that's another way that you could split a rectangle into fourths. So you guys nailed it today with partitioning circles and rectangles into halves, thirds, and fourths. So please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends. Mm -hmm.